that you were meaning to get in touch with me, but then I heard you were dead. And I also heard that you were a king and various other things. But the fact is, Loki, you and I are not the sort people understand. We're the sort people fear. Now I got the information that I need, and now I have to break your neck. It's just the way it is. I'm not, I'm just a messenger. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Josh Brolin just revealed that Marvel is bringing Thanos back in the live-action movies. They've already brought him back a few times in animation since Avengers Endgame, and there have been a lot of deleted scenes, alternate endings for movies featuring his backstory, the younger version of Thanos, like the Eternals movie. We'll call that the Thanos version of Thanos. But this would be him coming back in live action, so we'll break it all down. You just have to picture the reaction when he does return. You couldn't live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. It's funny how circumstances in real life wind up paying off lines from earlier Marvel movies. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're supposed to get that Deadpool 3 trailer later this week. Of course, I will do all the videos for it, so be sure to enable alerts for my channel. Speaking of Deadpool, because it seems like they're going to wind up on the Void Planet from Loki during that movie, I'm hoping they pay off the Thanos copter joke with a Deadpool moment because they kind of did that in the Deadpool comics a while ago. But as I said, Josh Brolin has already come back a couple times as alternate versions of Thanos since Avengers Endgame during Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5, mostly through the What If episodes, like Thanos that was turned good by Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa Star-Lord or Zombie Thanos from the Marvel Zombies episode. We never found out what happened to him either. Turns out he's also coming back in the Marvel Zombies TV series next year too. But the real big news is Josh Brolin saying that Marvel plans to bring him back in the live action movies in a much bigger way. There are a lot of untapped stories with the character and ways to bring him back without having to make it the main 616 version of Thanos that Iron Man killed with his Infinity Gauntlet snap in Avengers Endgame. Because on the other side of that, Kevin Feige said that they wouldn't bring back this version of Iron Man the died. Like, they wouldn't bring him back to life because it would undo his sacrifice. So I feel like bringing back that version of Thanos, specifically that version, would also do the same thing. So if they brought him back, it would be another version of the character or a younger version of the character. They actually got into his backstory with Star Fox and his parents Alars and Sui San on Titan during the Eternals alternate ending and deleted scenes. And originally, they had a bunch of extra backstory for him explaining his character, his relationship with Thanos, tying in more with the backstory for Titan that we got during Avengers Infinity War that explains what happened to Titan and why it got destroyed. And the darker ending sort of ties in with what they were doing with these extra Harry style scenes. Like an Empire Strikes Back Avengers Infinity War style ending with a really hardcore downer moment. But in the deleted scenes, Star Fox is seen with the other Eternals while they're dressed in their base layers before they've been sent to a new celestial seed world. The silver or grayish robes that they all wear when they're being rebooted and their minds are being wiped. This is basically what they look like between missions. Like, they've been doing this for millions of years, going around to different galaxies, different celestial seed worlds, birthing new celestials. And after each new celestial is born, no matter which group of Eternals you're talking about, which galaxy you're talking about, they all go back to their ship. And they go back to these base layer robes and get rebooted. They go into hibernation as they're sent to another world. Salma Hayek actually revealed that she was here filming these scenes with Harry Styles when they were dressed in these robes. It sounds like they filmed more flashbacks for Harry Styles' character to explain his story when he shows up in this version of the theatrical cut, but also another version of the ending where Harry Styles is with them when they're all being sent to another planet to birth another celestial. And we would have seen Harry Styles Star Fox with his original group of Eternals traveling to Titan and more scenes of him with younger Thanos and the other Eternals that were part of his group of Eternals. The director explained that Star Fox was originally part of a group of 10 Eternals that were sent to Titan by Ayrshon the Judge because it's always a group of 10. Like, that's why they start with this group of Eternals and there are 10 of them before Ajax gets killed. So Star Fox's group of 10 Eternals were sent to Titan because Titan was another celestial seed world. The director didn't say which celestial was inside Titan, but that was the idea. And he also rebelled against his group's mission, just like Cersei and the other main group of Eternals in this movie do, except he was not successful in saving Titan. He fled the planet before it was destroyed, rebelling against Ayrshon the Judge. I know it sounds like there's some conflicting information between the story Thanos told about what happened to Titan and what they were going to say happened during the Eternals movie, but in all these alternate Star Fox scenes, it's implied that the emergence on Titan was the reason it was destroyed. I think that Thanos' story about overpopulation in Avengers Infinity War fits with the Eternals' true mission to drive overpopulation in order to speed up the emergence. If you think about it that way, it's not as much of a continuity issue. 
Each celestial needs to feed off a certain amount of cosmic energy given off by life on planets, so the more people, the faster that happens, and Thanos said that he wanted to kill half the population on Titan to prevent that from happening. So the idea is that Thanos also probably learned about the emergence on Titan and tried to stop it by getting rid of half the people. You're not the only one cursed with knowledge. So this is a new way of contextualizing Thanos' plan to balance half the universe. It makes him seem like more of an anti-hero than a total villain. Like getting rid of half the population to stop the Celestials from creating more Celestials. And I think that's why Star Fox also didn't try to stop Thanos earlier from snapping half of all life with the Infinity Gauntlet. Like if Star Fox is another Prime Eternal with this Celestial Core, it means he's crazy powerful. But if Star Fox also rebelled against Ershin the Judge the way they explain in this movie, he also wouldn't have wanted to stop Thanos because it sounds like Thanos also had this grand plan to stop the Celestials. It's just that Thanos was going about it in the most hardcore, dark way possible. I did a longer video about how the Eternals movie recontextualizes Thanos' plan, making him seem like more of a hero, so I'll add a link for that in the description below. But the alternate ending, the downer version of the ending that the director said she originally wanted to use, started with the Eternals failing to stop the emergence on Earth, like Tiamat would have successfully been born, burst out of the Earth, destroying everything, all the remaining Eternals would have survived, and Ajax would have somehow survived or been repaired by Ersin the Judge. And the movie would have ended with them back in these gray robes being rebooted and sent to another celestial seed planet and the cycle would have started again. And it seems like they also shot a version of that downer ending with them being rebooted again with Harry Styles Star Fox character with them. The reasons why I think Marvel didn't want to use that version of the ending is one, because it's super depressing, and two, it would have raised too many questions about the continuity because how could they destroy Earth and still say this was the main MCU universe? It would only make sense if the events of the movie were happening in an alternate universe and the Eternals movie wasn't supposed to be a big multiverse plot the way Spider-Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness are multiverse movies. There's just way too many cosmic concepts and new mythology with the Celestials and the Black Knight that they were introducing in the film. And a lot of you have also asked how Star Fox and Thanos can be brothers and the sons of Alars and Suisan on Titan if they're all Eternals and all Eternals are just Celestial robots who can't have children. And how did Star Fox become the Prime Eternal of their group on Titan? Welcome, Thanos, son of Alas. So just based on all these deleted scenes and storylines that they've revealed, they imply that Ershin the Judge created Star Fox group of Eternals, all 10 of them together, including Thanos. So the MCU version of Thanos and Star Fox were probably not born biologically the children of Alars and Suisan the way they were in the comics. In their family, in the same way that all the Eternals think of each other as a hodgepodge family of sorts, like the Eternals that we see during the movie all think of each other as family, but they're not biologically related. I think the Red Skull scene from Avengers Infinity War where he's greeting Thanos and Gamora actually backs this up because he says Gamora, daughter of Thanos, and she was not born to Thanos, like he was her adoptive father. So when he says Thanos, son of Alars, in the MCU at least, it's a little bit different. And he's not saying that they're biologically related. I think they probably just changed that part of their backstory just in the name of simplicity for MCU continuity purposes. The reason why Thanos looks like Purple Space Grimace with the nutsack chin, different from all of the other Eternals from Titan, is because he carries the Deviant mutation, but he's not a Deviant himself, he's another Eternal that just looks different. In the MCU, the way they explain this is that all the Eternals are created to look similar to the beings that inhabit the Celestial Seed Worlds that they get sent to. They're just created to blend in with whatever populations they go to. So that's why Fastos looks different from Makari, for instance, all of the others, why they all speak with different accents. They were just created to blend in. When they get rebooted and sent to a new planet, they're just sort of reprogrammed to blend in with whatever population is on that planet. So for instance, if a group of Eternals was sent to the Skrull homeworld or a world in the Skrull Empire, the Eternals would look like Skrulls. And based on Star Fox's backstory, they imply that Thanos rebelled against their Eternals mission first, like he learned about the truth of the emergence first on Titan and was banished by Alars after he tried to get them to kill half the population to stop the emergence. You're not the only one cursed with knowledge. Then after he was gone, something happened to Alars, he also died, and then naming Star Fox his successor, passing his celestial core to him, and that's how Star Fox would have become the prime eternal of his group on Titan, taking over their emergence mission. But then also himself, eventually rebelling against Ershin the Judge and escaping, the same way that Cersei rebelled after she got the celestial core from Ajax. 
In the next time he shows up in a movie, Harry Styles shows up as Star Fox, like during Eternals 2 if they do a sequel or some other MCU space-based movie, they'll cover more of his backstory with Thanos on Titan. So eventually they will tell the rest of that story. For those of you that want to see more of young Thanos, like the thinner version of Thanos, we can call him Thinos. Let me know in the comments though if you'd rather see Thanos come back as the younger version of the character in Eternals 2 to tell more of the history with the other Eternals, if they ever wanted to introduce Squadron Supreme and Hyperion for instance, Hyperion is another Eternal from another world with a backstory that just happens to be similar to Superman's backstory in the DC Universe. That's part of the whole joke of people calling Hyperion Marvel's evil version of Superman. Just because he eventually came to Earth after his original planet that he was sent to was destroyed, Krypton style. But in the MCU and in animation, they've typically portrayed Squadron Supreme like an evil version of the Avengers, so it'd be a twist on that if they ever did them in live action. But a big part of the plot of the Eternals ending was them searching for the other Eternals around the universe, so it's an easy way to introduce that character too, for instance. I just feel like there's too much untold story with Thanos' backstory, just in general. Then the other very obvious way to bring Thanos back in live action would be in Avengers 5 or Avengers 6 as a variant from another universe. Like if you're going to have Battle World with a bunch of multiverse versions of characters, that's a really easy way to bring back another version of Thanos because he was a very big part of comic book Secret Wars with a really funny twist on the character. Maybe, maybe if we're lucky we'll see a version of God Emperor Doom ripping his spine out of his body. But there's a bunch of big stuff coming this week. Big reminder, it's Super Bowl Trailer Fest. We should get that new Deadpool 3 trailer soon. So I will post that as soon as they do release it. And there's a bunch of other big stuff coming too. Click here to learn why Deadpool and Wolverine are going to save the MCU by destroying everything. And click here for that Eternals Black Knight deleted scene with Kit Harrington. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.